Welcome back from spring break. We're now in week 11, which started today, March 22nd, and ends on Sunday, March 28th. What to expect. So in this slide, I'm going to talk about the topic, assignments, and a few other comments. Um, our topic for this week is persuasion. You can earn up to 10 points by participating in discussion seven. And I'm going to go over grading and the group project on the upcoming slides. Part two, social influence. So our topic for this week is persuasion. That's chapter seven. And I'm reading right from the agenda, but you can also find this information in our course textbook. Um, chapter seven is broken into three sections. The first is what path leads to persuasion. And you're trying to identify the two paths that leads to persuasion. You wanna describe the type of cognitive processing each involves and its effects. All right, second, what are the elements of persuasion? So you're gonna describe how the factors that compose persuasion affect the likelihood that we will take either a central or peripheral route, peripheral route to persuasion. And three, how can persuasion be resisted? So identify some tactics for resisting influence. How might we prepare people to resist unwanted persuasion? Ways to earn points. So this week you have one graded assignment and that's D7. You can earn up to 10 points for participating in our discussion um, regarding persuasion. So you make your initial post by Wednesday and you get up to six points for that. And then you respond to two or more classmates by Friday and you'll get four points for that. Now, I do wanna remind you that your post should be substantive. So just saying I agree or I disagree in response to a peer, that's not a substantive post. What you wanna do is have a conversation, but obviously you're typing. But you wanna add some information that you learned from reading your textbook or watching the video, or you learned from another class. But the point is you wanna like add some substance in your conversation, in your discussion with your peers. And when you make your initial post, be organized, be um, you know concise, but make sure you also have qual a quality initial post. Daycare. So I was talking with Professor Bernhardt and we tended to agree that we wanted to make sure our students at CF understood that they have access to BayCare. And BayCare has a helpline that's free for personal counseling. And as a student at CF, um, this is something that is available to you. So you can call 1-800-878-5470 or you can visit um, BayCare SAP at BayCare.org. And the point is, it's okay to get help. If you think you're gonna fail this class, you might consider withdrawing instead. Um, the last day to withdraw with the W is April 2nd, and our exam week is April 30th to May 6th. The last day of our class is May 3rd. So, you know, the grade book is pretty up to date, and I would say you need to take an honest appraisal of where you stand and the likelihood that you're gonna pass the class. And if you think there's a chance that you're gonna fail, uh, or that you're not gonna be able to uh, put forth the effort required to pass, then you probably wanna consider withdrawing. Real talk. So this is a check-in. This week, we're moving to week 11. And so, so far from weeks one through 10, you could have earned a maximum of 270 points. So if you have between 243 and 270 points, then you currently have an A in the class. If you score between 216 and 242, you currently have a B. If you score between 189 and 215, you're sitting at a C. So you wanna figure out where you are right now so you can make a decision about how you're gonna progress, how you're gonna finish up strong or how you're gonna take a break and try again at another time. So your grade in this class is based on points and those are the points that you earn. So it's up to you. The points are converted into a letter grade at the very end. And this information is available in the syllabus, but I thought it was worthwhile um, uh, you know, to go over it here. So we have a total of 600 points in the class. So like I said, we're at 270 now, but there's a total of 600. And all you need is 540 points to get that A. Now, what I wanna say is that for you, uh, and you know, this applies to some students, not others, you really are concerned about that grade. For me, I'm not so much concerned about your grade. I'm more concerned that I 
share what I learn, that I can kind of learn something from you, and that I create a space for students to collaborate, to communicate, to learn a little bit about social psychology. So that's what I care about, not the grades. With that said, to be fair, I'm very straightforward. I provide lots of opportunities and I stick to what is in the syllabus. So don't think that you're going to come to me and say, hey, Ms. Sims, can I get some extra credit? No, boo. You had 600 points, okay? You had 600 points and that was plenty of time to earn the A in the class because you only need 540 points. Now, with that said, I do offer extra credit at several points in the semester. As you notice, I've already offered 10 points extra credit that was added directly to your test one. I will also be offering another 10 points extra credit when it comes to test two. So make sure you, um, you know, take advantage of all the opportunities that are available to you. I was deciding if I should be on camera for this slide, but I wanted to talk to you briefly about project two, group project two. So we're in social psychology, right? So that means, you know, the whole class is about the way that we think about other people, the way other people influence how we think about ourselves, how we uh, have relationships with other people. Um, so social psychology is all about your connection with others, right? So it makes sense that we would have two group projects in this social psychology class, as opposed to the one group project that I offer in my general psych and my human growth and development. Now, what you wanna do is use the feedback that you received from your first group project and use that to your, to your advantage to make a better, more polished, awesome second group project, okay? Now here's the tips uh, or the guidelines for the second group project. You decide who you're gonna work with. I'm not gonna put you in a group. So you can work with the same people you worked with last time if that was a good cohesive group for you or if you know somebody in the class and you wanna try out you know, a new group, switch to a new group. Or if there was someone in the group who didn't really cooperate, then you know you don't have to invite them to be a part of the second group. Now, inevitably, I'm gonna have someone say, well, I'd work better alone. I wouldn't work by myself. It's a group project, boo. So you're gonna have to work with somebody else. I get it. I personally like working solo also, but in the real world, you have to work with others. Whether you're gonna work fast food, whether you're gonna be a doctor, a lawyer, whether you're gonna be a musician, whether you're gonna be an entrepreneur, Whatever you're gonna do, you're gonna have to work with others, okay? So interpersonal and intrapersonal skills are key. They are a critical um, skill to have to succeed in life. And so working with others is something that you should embrace. Now I get it, it's a challenge. I've had those situations where you have the group member that is very bossy and overbearing and they're getting on your last nerve or you have the group member that's non just doesn't cooperate, doesn't do their share, doesn't pull their end of the weight. Yes, that happens. Or you have the member who is eager to help, but they do a sloppy job. Well, this group project is a chance for you to practice um, how to deal with these different people, right? These different uh, personalities or these different situations. Um, but anyway, we're moving into the end of the term. So you wanna find who you're gonna work with. And this is totally up to you. You get to decide. You're gonna let me know by participating in that discussion forum that I started specifically for group project two. And then you wanna start figuring out what topic you wanna to do. You can do any topic that you want. There's no topics that are off limit. The only requirement is that the topic has to connect back to social psychology in some kind of way. So whatever you choose, you need to make sure it connects back with social psychology. Um, if you decide that you want to um, pick a topic that's very popular, um, you're going to need to run it by me. And quite honestly, you need to run the topic by me anyway, so I can make sure we're, you're on the right track. But um, we don't want to have everybody doing the same second group project. So we want to have a variety. Okay, so if someone chooses a topic and they let me know, then that topic will pretty much be off limits unless the two groups can decide how they're going to break it up and, you know, look at the topic differently. So in sum, you do have a second group project. It's worth 100 points. The due date is going to be the 26th of April, and you basically need to find your own members and you need to find a topic. And um, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, use the group project thread that I started to um, post those questions, comments, or concerns, and you can also email me. Okay, look at me. I done went ahead and gave you some bonus slides, boo. Okay, some of you missed test one or you did poorly on test one. Don't stress about that. 
take a deep breath and remember I give a makeup at the end of the semester so um, you can check out some more details in the syllabus just but just know that you'll be able to take an alternate version of test one um, in the next few weeks and um, it will sub in for your um, missed test one let's get it together people test two will be here before you know it so um, I'm planning to make test two available as of the 5th of April and then it will close on the 11th of April it will be worth 100 points there will also be an extra credit assignment that will be worth up to 10 points and just like test one test two will be administered via honor lock um, so what that means is you want to take the honor lock practice quiz to make sure your computer is you know functioning you do need a camera you do need a microphone uh, it's not open book but you are allowed to have one page of notes two-sided and the chapters are going to be chapters five six seven and eight so basically test one was part one test two is part two so this is all about social influence I'll do a practice Kahoot or a challenge Kahoot for the class prior to test one um, excuse me prior to test two and I'll also do a poll to see if we have um, students who are interested in doing a zoom I didn't host a second zoom um, so far because the first zoom was we only had one student attend so it seems like you guys do better with watching the videos but I will post um, a, a you know a thread to see uh, you know if we have enough students who are interested in holding a zoom maybe we'll do that before test two so for those of you who are already looking ahead or have already finished chapter seven chapter eight is what we'll talk about next week and that is also part of this um, part two social influence um, the topic is group influence and we define what a group is we learn a little bit about social facilitation and social loathing you also learn about the individuation and group polarization and finally group think and the influence of the minority so I'm looking forward to some interesting discussions that's all folks